<sighs> okay, so it has been a wild couple of weeks. If you've been living under a rock for some reason and were not aware, Unity announced a huge and frankly ridiculous pricing model change to its users. This announcement absolutely dominated the conversations happening in all spectrums of game development and reached far and wide throughout the whole industry. And after about a week and a half of faffing around, Unity have now announced an improved version of their initially outrageous plan. Friend of the channel, Mike, aka Game From Scratch, covered this whole debacle in great detail. So if you want more information about the whole timeline and how things played out day to day, go ahead and watch his videos. I'll link them below. Myself and a number of peers have actually been in constant communication with staff at Unity throughout this whole debacle. And some of us were even given a couple of opportunities to speak directly to Mark Witten and some of the leadership team, giving our thoughts and feedback on how much of a up this whole thing was. I'm making this video because I want to share how this whole thing has been handled and give some of my own perspectives on what things might be like going forward and not only for Unity but for myself professionally and what that might mean for the channel. So Unity have a Slack channel that they use to communicate with YouTubers and streamers making content about Unity. Some of us were able to read the details of this pricing change a day before the initial blog post went live. I don't think it's hyperbolic to state that pretty much everyone inside of that Slack group immediately started pointing out all of the same flaws in the plan that everyone else has been vocalizing since the announcement. The flawed concept of an install and vagueness around how they'd be tracked, the stupidly confusing scaling of this fee structure in the first place and how it could bankrupt people, and the policy of retroactively claiming the money for any game made with Unity in time memoriam. I'm barely scratching the surface of the issues here, but trust me, we were all pushing back at the absurdity of this thing immediately and how needlessly complex it was. The next day, Unity published the blog. I'd like to point out that Cal and the rest of the staff on the community team and socials team are lovely and genuinely, I'm super grateful that we're trusted to get information like this and offer feedback. We'll very regularly see things and be given the opportunity to offer our feedback, sometimes months in advance, and it's usually taken into account. And that's why this whole thing was so confusing. Management seemed to drop it on us last minute and then completely ignore the many, many issues we had. Our feedback on this was probably the most unanimous it's ever been in receiving news in that channel, and it was clear to nearly all of us that this was a bad idea. So given how fiercely we were trying to push back on this, and apparently how Unity staff were pushing back on this internally too, this whole debacle just shouldn't have happened. Following the public release, I felt not only was this a huge overreach on Unity's part, but I began to question my loyalty to them entirely and whether or not I wanted to be associated with a company that could fundamentally change the terms like this and betray everyone's trust overnight. So I released a statement. First and foremost, a lot of the conversations I was having with my peers and colleagues at the studio I'm working at were focused solely on how much of an overreach this was and how much this jeopardizes trust in Unity as a company moving forward. Most people I spoke to weren't too bothered about the fee itself. The metric was stupid and I honestly could talk for hours about the mental gymnastics required to consider installs as a sensible measurement system, but for the fee itself, the sort of space we operate in was in the target and most of the reactions I heard were whatever, it's fine, or it's still cheaper than a rev share. But the underhandedness and ethically questionable way in which Unity went about doing this created significant questions for myself and my peers. Essentially, a lot of the conversations moved to value alignment and whether or not it's worth supporting a company that thinks it's okay to change the terms of your business contract overnight to the egregious degree in which Unity thought that it could. Let's not forget here, they genuinely thought that this original offering was a good idea and beneficial to their business model and customers. But the backlash came, the house was on fire, and so Unity staff and leadership were working overtime to try and put it out. Obviously, I can't discuss too many details due to NDA, but as I said earlier, thanks to a push from the community team and various staff at Unity, myself and a few others on the Insider program were able to talk to Mark and leadership, voicing our concerns and giving very fierce feedback on this whole situation. So I wanted to sit on it for a bit and see how it would shake out before making this video. Now, ultimately, I'm satisfied with where Unity have walked this back to. My biggest issues were these terms of service blackmail and stupidly immeasurable metrics, which have now been adjusted. Unity developers now get a choice and it's down to Unity to provide the value add to convince its developers to opt into this new pricing scheme. That's how it always should have been. And that's how you should run a business. Provide value and make people want to pay more for your product based on the merit of the product alone. And so here we arrive at the big elephant in the room. I wanna say this as someone who's been working in Unity for nearly eight years now, 
Most of my professional career so far has been built in Unity, and this channel was born purely to help people like myself working in Unity professionally. So I want to be a huge advocate for the product and pretend like everything is hunky-dory, but it's far from it. This model is still needlessly complex. And one thing was always clear to me speaking to my peers, Unity was chosen because its pricing model was simple, and now it's not. It's no secret that it's a half-baked engine. If you've watched anything on my channel, you'll know how strongly I despise how undercooked so many parts of the engine feel. But that was always the price to pay for such a simple and understandable business model. I don't think it's much of a stretch to expect studios to be doing a much more critical analysis when it comes down to choosing an engine to use in the future. Up until now, Unreal was the expensive option, and Unity was the good enough cheaper option if you had a game that didn't need cutting edge high-end graphics and you could put up with a little bit of jank. Unity was the one to use. But now, that's just not the case. And look, I understand that this is nuanced. If you're a solo developer in the personal tier and not expecting to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, then sure, this isn't really going to affect you that much. But it doesn't change the fact that the model has changed and Unity are now asking for more of the pie. Developers will now be paying a subscription fee until their game is shipped and then a subscription fee and revenue share or sales fee. And while the total payments maybe don't shake out to too much in the long run, it's now an added consideration where it once wasn't and additional accounting or overhead the studio now needs to do. So the question starts to move to, what am I getting in return for this additional fee? It would not surprise me to see studios finishing their current Unity games and then abandoning it for either totally free options, such as Godot or a bespoke engine, or for a more robust battle-tested engine like Unreal, which yes, you still pay for, but it's 5% of your final revenue and there's a feeling of tangible improvement to the product with every iteration, something I'm not really sure many of us can say about Unity. Unity claim that this revenue is going to go to improving the core engine features, but it feels like we're being gaslit a little bit considering the many, many actions Unity have taken the past few years to do anything but spend money improving the engine. Besides, how can you claim you don't have money when you buy Weta Digital for over a billion dollars? Something doesn't quite add up here. It just feels like their core audience are being forced to pay for the many, many questionable business decisions this company has made since going public. So the final point here then, and I guess the biggest concern that this entire debacle has raised for most of us is a matter of trust and values. At this point, Unity leadership has shown their hand. Their values do not really align with that of the broader game development community, and it's clear that if these same executives remain in play, something like this can and probably will happen again. Unity have a lot of work to do to rebuild trust, and right now, I'm incredibly skeptical. So what does this mean for the channel? Well, moving forward, I'm choosing to diversify my content. My experience in Unity definitely makes it hard to abandon it completely, and the studio I work for will be using it at least until we ship our current game. So there'll still be Unity content on the channel. I'm also willing to work and partner with them as I genuinely believe in the product. I have friends there, and as things stand right now, I feel management have made the changes necessary to justify keeping the door ajar. However, I'm also going to begin creating content for Unreal Engine. Ironically, the angle of overly niche and underdocumented topics I'm known for, and Unreal Engine's very surface level confusing documentation, is an absolute well to be tapped regarding content. Now you might be asking, Matt, why not Godot? Foss for the win! And while I'm happy for you, the simple answer is that it's just not the best career choice. As it stands, it's missing too many features and it's not industry standard enough yet. Given everything I've seen recently, I don't feel like I could justify spending my spare time learning it and continue to make a living off of using it. I may play around with it from time to time, but learning the Unreal Engine is just the better career choice for me right now. So yeah, that's it. Those are my thoughts on this whole mess. I'm sad this whole thing happened and it just feels needless. I think it's done a ton of damage to Unity's reputation and I think for myself and many others to regain our trust, Unity's management have got a lot of work to do. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed.